Success with a planted tank comes through various things. And one of the most important parts in setting up a successful planted tank is knowing what substrate is going to work and what the benefits of every substrate type is. We're going to dive into that in detail in this short series. This is Substrate 101, everything you need to know about substrate. Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and today we're going to start the very first part of the Substrate 101 series. The goal here is to teach you the basics of substrate. We're not going to go super in-depth, which is to say I'm not going to compare the difference of every single type of substrate. So we'll do more broad strokes, like aqua soils, and we'll talk about them kind of in a group as opposed to like the differences between each brand of aqua soil. That's a little more complicated than we need to dive into right now. Before we kind of get rolling here, let me tell you how we're going to do this. We're going to break this up into this is going to be a basic tutorial of the types. And then we'll go the subsequent portions of this series. will teach you a little bit more in depth on each type of substrate, where we want to use them, where we'll find the most success, what the benefits are of that substrate and what the downsides to that substrate are. And finally, we'll cap it all off and we'll talk about what my personal favorite setup for substrate is when it comes to setting up a planet tank like this one behind me. With that being said, let's talk about the two major important differences in substrate, and that is active substrate versus inert substrate. Inert substrates are going to be things like our sands and gravels, okay? What they do is they don't have any effect on the water column. Active substrates are going to be some of our things like uh, aqua soils and even things like aragonite sand or crushed coral, where they will do some kind of effect to the water column. But for the purposes of planted tanks, we're typically not going to look at the uh, pushing pH up like your crushed corals. We're going to look into aqua soils. So let's dive in very briefly into each of these types and, and give a cover of what we're looking at. We're going to start with inert substrates. And I have a little example here with some sand. Sand is really, really popular. And the nice thing about it is it's cheap. You can get a bag of pool filter sand or whatever for like $20 at the hardware store, and it's going to cover a lot of a tank. But there's some downsides to this stuff. What matters here is that because it's inert, we're not going to affect the water column at all. So if you're trying to bring your pH down or bring your pH up, this won't help you. You will have to use something else in order to help you. Typically, we look at sand as decorative in the planet tank world. We're going to put sand in places where we want something bright color and we don't want plants to be. Or we're going to look at the next one, gravel. Now, this is a, a pretty simple like river rock style gravel here. There's gravel in every color under the moon, including Painted hawk pink, your favorite football team. I've seen some Seahawks colored stuff. Uh, the neon stuff that goes in glowfish tanks. There's a lot of different types of gravel. And again, much like our sand, this is also going to be inert. It's much larger grain. It's typically only used for decoration. But there are plenty of people out there who will put a tank together with just gravel. Again, because it's inert, it's not going to affect your water. So if you need something to affect your water column... Gravel's not going to help you. However, one of the benefits to gravel versus, say, sand is that because it's much larger, it won't compact as easy. And that helps with your roots for plants if you happen to plant them in here. The problem is there's nothing in here that's going to promote good, healthy root growth in your plants. That's where we want to start looking at active substrates. Now, there are a lot of different active substrates out there. Uh, I have one sample here. This is a, a clay style, the little, I mean, you can literally see it on my fingers, the teeny, teeny, teeny little balls of, of mineralized clay. They have all sorts of nutrition in them. And one of the best things about active substrates is they will both pull and release nutrients to and from the water column. So if you're dosing liquid fertilizers, active substrates will slowly pull little bits of that into the soil themselves. When you initially set a tank up, 
they have a lot of nutrients in them that helps stimulate plant growth because they're also in this like kind of clay ball consistency here it's not as compact or dense so it helps roots tunnel in get through and they're slightly porous so the roots can really grab onto the substrate get a nice hold have a place to feed from and start growing lush lush plant growth and worrying more about growing those healthy plant leaves and stems and less about growing a root structure like it might happen in denser substrates like sand. There are a lot of active substrates and we'll cover them far more in depth soon. But for our purposes, I'm only holding one. This happens to be Brightwell's uh, Rio Escuro F, which <laughs> there's uh, a million different, <laughs> I swear. But you know, your, your ADAs, your fluolstratums, there's a lot of different stuff like this. And also in that, it's not only mineralized soils. Keep in mind that active substrates can also include things like echocomplete, fluorite, so whether that's the black or the red, crushed coral, technically, aragonite sand. Um, a lot of these things are designed to do something to your water. So like aragonite sand and crushed coral, they're going to add minerals to the water and push your pH up. They're going to harden your water. Most of your aqua soils like this are designed actually to buffer your pH down and make your water a little bit softer because most plants appreciate soft water. So for our purposes later on in the series, we're really only going to address this kind of active substrate, the stuff that's designed for plants and not necessarily say like buffering your water for African cichlids or for you know, saltwater fish, etc, etc. Inside of active substrates, there's only two little categories. You have base layer fertilization, and then you have the soil. I'm not currently holding a thing of base level fertilization, but think of like ADA power sand. These are the things that are designed to go underneath the main layer of substrate and act purely for creating beneficial bacteria, adding extra nutrients, stimulating plant root growth, this kind of stuff. It's extra nutrition and beneficial space below the substrate. The goal here, typically in most of these, is to be a little more coarse and allow water flow down in that area so that we're not creating anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic bacteria is typically found in very dense substrate layers like deep sand beds. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we cover inert substrates such as sand. Trust me, this is interesting stuff, but a little too high level for what we want to do right now. Finally, there's one more kind of substrate that I'm sure if I don't cover, there will be someone in the comments beating me up about it, and that is dirt. If you can tell by my face, I am not a fan of dirt tanks, but despite my bias against them, we will talk about dirt tanks. As should be obvious by this, this is just your standard soil that you would use for terrestrial plants. In this case, I just have a small amount of potting soil because I was planting some tomatoes recently. We usually do not use actual potting soil to do this, and we'll go over this in depth in the uh, episode all about dirt. But for now, just understand that there are a lot of risks to using dirt. It is extremely messy, and it typically takes a very experienced person to have success with dirt. For the most part, if you are a beginner or you want to play it safe, we're going to stick to our active substrate aqua soils. I'm going to give you plenty of details as to why coming up. Trust me on that. Stay tuned. It's going to be very important. So this is kind of your primer. Before we move any further, let me explain why my opinion matters. Maybe you're uh, new, that you haven't seen any of my content before, you're not familiar with me. For those of you who've been around for a while, you'll know why. But uh, the, the simple stuff. Uh, I am a multi-time master aquatic horticulturalist for the Greater Seattle Aquarium Society. I am currently the, uh, if, if you look at like a leaderboard of points, which is something we keep, I'm the highest point earner in the club, period. Basically, there it's, it's like many, many year history since the 70s. Uh, I've achieved master aquatic horticulturist through my club eight times. We're about to do nine now. I think it's nine. I'm really close. <laughs> um, so basically put, I have a lot of experience growing plants and doing planted tanks. 
and I've used all sorts of different substrates and tested all sorts of things through my experience, trying to figure out what I can and can't do. That is something that I love to do. I work as a testing professional for a living. I work specifically in software and hardware tests. However, I like to take that mentality and those standards into my aquariums when I play with equipment or when I'm setting up tanks. I will do experiments all the time. Uh, Not anything that will risk the life of my fish, let's be clear here, but I like trying to see what I can and can't do. So understand that when I start talking about this stuff in depth, it comes from my personal experience, as well as some documentation based on just general knowledge from the years and years of people doing planted tanks, both before me and what will come after. So with that being said, stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to start with our inert substrates. Uh, I think it's really good because there's lots of tanks that use an inert substrate and aren't trying to necessarily grow grow plants. I want to cover why these matter and where we would use an inert substrate in a planted tank. And then from there, we'll move on through our active substrates, all that kind of good stuff, give you everything you need to know in this series. If you've enjoyed this little primer so far, give it a little thumbs up, comment down below, let me know what you're most excited to see out of this series. I'd love to hear from all of you. I also, this just super helps for like the magic YouTube algorithms if you're commenting and liking. And if you're not a subscriber and you subscribe, man, does that really tell YouTube like, I like this crazy fat guy. He talks about plants and I like that. Just saying, I would appreciate it. Uh, For those of you who are tired of me talking about plant tanks and rainbow fish, why do you keep watching? You hit thumbs down. Go on. No, hit it again. All right, you did it twice. Your job's done. We'll see you later. (laughs) As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And stay awesome. Okay, we're going to go in the after video now. Uh, So that was short primer. I really hope you guys are excited for this. This was a... a heavily desired series. I get lots of questions about substrate all the time. My my favorite substrate, the best substrate. Uh, man, the the answer for this is uh, is always complicated. But I really hope you're looking forward to this. Definitely, definitely. Please comment down below if you've watched this far, like what you're most excited to learn about, or what you're most excited just to hear me talk about when it comes to substrate. Now, a little off topic, on topic. Both? If you haven't seen it, uh, Balash and the Green Aqua Team put together a fantastic video that will go over basically their learning series on substrate. Uh, they cover this from like the really high technical side of Planet Tanks trying to do aquascaping. It's absolutely phenomenal. I wanted to do something uh, a little a little more in-depth uh, as far as like multi-episode instead of one shot, but I think that video is really, really worthwhile watching. I'm going to go ahead and link that at the end of this video. Uh, you should probably see it now but at this point. But uh, I just wanted to give them a shout-out because you know, the Green Aqua team does such amazing work. Uh, they they make uh, the peons like me look, <laughs> look like we don't know what we're doing when it comes to putting together YouTube videos. We're not worthy! But uh, for those of you who are here, if you're a member, be on the lookout. Uh, you're going to see relatively soon some kind of insights on uh a tank i'm working on i know Billy's actually working on a tank be afraid and uh if you're not a member and you want to get info on that you want to get into that see those kind of things consider hitting that join button down below um the content is never going to be anything that you wouldn't see in a video so an example would be like if i'm building a tank that video is coming out eventually and the, it's just kind of a behind-the-scenes peek is what you get on the member side. Uh, the only other major thing is if you're at the Rainbow Fish level or higher, you get access to the members-only Discord where there's a small community of people that get lots of access to yours truly as well as just some wonderful, wonderful folks. So whether you want to post pictures like KB Ozzy or uh, you want to ask questions like a lot of people do, it's the fastest way to get a hold of me because... I pay attention to uh, Discord when I can. I try to answer as quickly as I can. Sometimes, you know, I'll answer email a little slow because I'll be working 13 hours a day at work or something crazy like that. But uh, 
you know, it's it's a good way to get short things from me. Don't expect like a you know six hour back and forth conversation or anything. But if you're interested, becoming a member gives you really great access to that. If not, seriously, like, comment, share. Those are the best things in the world when it comes to helping any YouTube channel out. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay awesome.